Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Carolise, your business analyst coach, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic again. And this topic is what's the difference between requirements and acceptance criteria? This is a very important topic because I know a lot of people struggle with this, especially people who are transitioning into Agile to see how do I stop thinking waterfall and start thinking Agile and how, how does that work? What's the difference between a requirement and acceptance criteria? Are they the same? Do they a different format? Like, what, you know, how do I do this? So I'm here to help you calm down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> okay. So if you're working in Agile already, this might still be helpful for you. If you're a new graduate, this is all to be great for you as well. And if you are just transitioning into Agile, then obviously this will be helpful as well. So we're talking about that today. I'm going to give you the differences of between acceptance criteria and requirements and help to give you some guidance as to, you know, how to think about each one. But before I get into that, I have to share this with you. I just have to. I know you didn't come here for this, but I have to tell you. So... Right now, if I look through my, my window, I have a pond, well, like a lake, and I have a good view of it. And so I used to have these two geese that would come to my, my lake every year, right? They, you know, geese mate for life. So this couple, they come, they're wild geese, they come, they fly away, they come back in the winter time. And I have not seen them the whole of 2020, right? They were here 2019. And then another male geese came and he was just like standing on my lawn like this, with his neck really long and looking like really firm. And I was even scared of him. <laughs> Cause I go out there to feed them. And this one, I was like, I don't know what this geese gonna do. So <laughs> I would just throw the seeds and be gone. And so, <laughs> so he just came over and just bullied every other geese. I was just standing there for a while and he comes every day and does that. So I saw one day, my, ge my two geese, my favorite geese, I call them Nina and Skylar. They would swim up to the pond and they look on my shore. Not shore, but like the grass line. And they would see this geese like there and they would just swim right around and fly off. <laughs> and I never saw them again. And then that male geese flew away. And I didn't see him either, thank God. I mean, I love animals. That one was really like a bully. So... <laughs> So I looked in my window, uh, I think it was this weekend, and I saw my geese come back, my pair, my couple, Nina and Skylar, and they were just, I was just so happy. I rushed out there, I grabbed my camera. I mean, I have some bird feed that I had saving up for the day when they come back, and I went in and threw it, threw it out for them. But I also always like feed the birds in the springtime anyway. I have a bird feeder in my backyard as well, so. I always have bird food anyway so <laughs> i ran out there i tried to feed them i mean of course they were a little timid they always like swim away sometimes and then they come up and they're ready but i'm telling you i was elated just to see <laughs> just to see the birds come back i just thought i have to tell you guys because it's really something that's making me happy i also had my daughter's um six-year-old birthday party this weekend so she turned six so that was that was pretty cool too so quite an exciting weekend for me um with the birds and with the <laughs> the kids and of course you hear my dog going off again he's upstairs i locked him upstairs this time because he'll run down here and with that ball <laughs> that ball i'm telling you one day i'm gonna get rid of the ball but i can't right now he loves it too much i have to find a good replacement that's quieter first so that's what's going on with me and i thought i'd share that with you okay So now back to why you really came to this video, which is what is the difference between requirements and acceptance criteria? So the requirements are at a higher level. They're a high level. I mean, you could have detailed requirements, of course, but even when you go into detailed requirements, it's still broad it tends to be broad it tends to be focused on the business need and focus on the value to the customer or the user or the client however your business is stru uh, structured whereas your acceptance criteria is focused on testing it's focused on the test cases it's like testing steps do they accept or reject this step in the test and the reason why it's focused on testing is because acceptance criteria is focused on software delivery, whereas requirements are focused on business value and business need. 
okay so the acceptance criteria is at a very very minute level of detail that if it doesn't pass this step you have to reject it and therefore the, the whole user story is going to fail so the acceptance criteria is really like test steps that QA and whoever is testing the software is going to use to evaluate if the software is meeting the user story and what dev is going to use to go build so they're going to build this thing to match this test case so it can pass so it can be accepted if that makes sense that's why it's acceptance criteria do you see what i mean so it's very very focused on the testing it's software focused whereas business requirements are business needs and business value focused now it would seem like the acceptance criteria and the requirement should be the same in you know in fairy tale world but in the real world <laughs> they're not the same because there are some things that would be a part of the business value that's not really equating to a software delivery for example if i say i have a requirement that says that the you know the user must present themselves uh, or the user must present a photo id when they go to change their account number for example that might be a part of the the business rule or the business need um and that's going to help to prevent fraud and make sure you have the right person talking to the right person etc that's a complete process driven thing doesn't have to have a software equivalent so maybe in the software you could have said that you have a checkbox to say id was presented you could do that but sometimes this can just be handled with training you don't have to you know enforce the software to do that you know the, the clerk just be trained as to that's what they need to do so there's no acceptance criteria for that piece you know what i'm saying so there's not everything that's a requirement going to translate into an acceptance criteria because acceptance criteria is solely for the software delivery right it's a complete it focused software development focused thing um you could have acceptance criteria in a broader sense for a project you know you could have project acceptance criteria but for our purposes and the way we use it in the in the real world in the business analysis sense uh we write requirements and then we have acceptance criteria as a separate thing it's really mainly about the software delivery right so if it's been used in different terminology elsewhere that's great but from if you're talking to people in this space and you say acceptance criteria they're thinking about how the software is being delivered that's what it means for us right now what else about the acceptance criteria and the requirement i would say that the user stories are being managed in their specialized tool obviously most people use jira as the tool of choice for managing agile scrum and so most of the time your user stories are being written in jira and the acceptance criteria has been written there as well whereas you know requirements tend to be written many places if you have jira there's a tool called confluence where they write the requirements sometimes in a confluence page but it's not a must you could write your your requirements in word sometimes it's even powerpoint sometimes it's even excel i mean general microsoft tools is fine and that's where a lot of people are managing their their requirements it's not really a specialized tool that's just for requirements now back in the day you know under heavy waterfall like in the glory days of waterfall you used to have a tool called rational rows and that was like uml focused so you could write requirements there do uml diagrams there but it's really kind of archaic right now nobody's nobody that i know is really using that tool um, from rational software but that used to be a very big thing back in the day when you know waterfall was the thing um what else about requirements versus acceptance criteria the acceptance criteria and the requirements are both atomic and if you you want a refresher on requirements how to write good requirements i have a, a video here that you can click on and um, go check that out i also have a video on the acceptance criteria where i give examples of how to actually write i get into jira and i show you or i get into i think it was target process at the time uh, that i was using and you go in there and you see exactly how our acceptance criteria is written for an example use case okay so if you want like tactical stuff like in the tool you know see exactly what it looks like go check that video out you can get more details there also you'll have some more information on my website go check out my website carolis.com and see what you can get from there as well 
now you can write your acceptance criteria in those specialized tools or and you know you know there is jira there is target process there's a bunch of other things that you can use the market has become much more open these days even though jira still is the number one tool for managing your agile team um and you write your requirements in a number of tools namely word word excel even powerpoint i know hp alm has this tool for testing that can also write requirements in so different organizations are trying to use the tools that they already paid for for something else and if they can use it for requirements as well they will but uh there isn't really a dedicated specialized tool for requirements right so as i was saying about atomic the acceptance criteria and the requirements are atomic meaning that this one single um, sentence normally relates to one and only one thing but you find that because the acceptance criteria is at a lower level of detail it's like very minute details like it gets into all of the specifics then um, you really have to make it easy to understand in a very short way there is no room for paragraphs upon paragraphs of information when you write an acceptance criteria one-liners is the thing to do one two-liners the most i mean it's it's somewhat similar for your requirements because you have to be able to grasp it quickly and you have to be able to estimate it quickly and it's not you doing the estimation that's going to be the devs and i'm going to do a, a, another video on estimation and and how that works for the for the perspective of the business analyst but um you have to make it easy to understand it has to be it has to be clear it has to be succinct it has to be atomic it has to be just you can you have to make it worded in such a way that it's just easy to test and easy to understand so that's the other thing about the requirement versus the acceptance criteria there's a structure for how you write your requirements the user must be able to blah 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 the user should blah 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 and it's written from the perspective of this is the business feature or functionality we want to to have this is a business need we're trying to solve for whereas the acceptance criteria is written as this is what you should test this is the exact testing that you should be doing right so it's more like user is able to open um the login page user is able to see these following options login button renewal button blah 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 like it's very down to the detail okay did you see this check see that check that happened check this happened check you know what I mean? Like boom, 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 boom. That's how they're working with the user story. They're trying to get acceptance. They're trying to say, okay, this worked, this worked, this worked, this worked. Therefore, the user story is, is, is working and it's complete, you know? So the way you write it is very, it's like a test case in a very short way, you know? And you're trying to make sure that anybody who picks up that user story understands what to build. Anybody who picks up the user story knows what to test for. So that's how you write the acceptance criteria to make sure that it's testable. Um, it's short sentences, it's very clear words, and you don't have to be elaborate in your explanations. Like I, had, I used to work with a team that was very strict on the format in which you wrote your requirements. You had to say it a specific way. The user must be able to blah, blah, blah. If you ever wrote the user should, it's like, no, that is not how you write a requirement. Oh. Like, those people drove me nuts. But <laughs> luckily, <laughs> here I am today, many years later. And uh, yeah, so it's, it, was, it's, it was crazy. With the acceptance criteria, you don't have to go th to those lengths of strict, you know, formatting. It's really just when the user does this, this happens. Or the user is able to do this. Um, you know, the user is able to see this. Like, it's just really clear and clean and short and to the point and there's no need for you to be a writer here like a prose writer or you're not a novelist okay so you're just gonna get to the point as fast as possible with as few words as possible and it's a skill it really is a skill because not everybody's able to break down a complicated thing to these smaller levels and be able to explain them in the shortest possible words so it, re it really is a skill but it's a skill you grow to to own you you grow to to do that you're going to make a lot of mistakes when you first write it and they're going to be you know when you've written it wrong when people are asking you to explain it when they're like, what do you mean by this and it could be explain it because 
it's not written clear or that they don't understand the background to why you've written it. So it could be written very clear, but they don't have the background information. So don't always think that because you asked a question mean that you didn't write it well. It's just over time you get it. Over time you'll get it, I promise you. The benefit of the people who are doing very well in Agile versus the ones who are not at this time. They've been there longer. They've been working in it longer. That's it. You get to a point where you just know how to write the story, you know? So stick with it and you'll get there too, okay? So I hope this was useful for you. Um, just wanted to highlight to you the differences between writing acceptance criteria and writing requirements. Like I said, the acceptance criteria is really very focused on testing and software delivery, while the business requirement is highly focused on the business value and we write it for the business need and making sure we are able to solve for the business need, okay? So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Please go check out my website, carolise.com, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.